If you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn with me to Matthew chapter number 10. We'll read verses uh, 24 through 33. Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 33. Verse 24 says, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than, any spar than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Uh, let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, tonight for your, your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. And, uh, Lord, I just ask you blessings upon each home that's represented here tonight and also those that's uh, joining us online. Uh, Lord, uh, open our hearts up tonight to your word. If there's one listening tonight that's lost and undone without you, I ask you to save them tonight before it's everlasting too late and uh, draw us, your children, closer to you. Lord, and uh, use your word tonight to remind us of how much you care for us and we thank you for all these things in jesus name amen so if you look back up to verse 24 the disciple is not above his master the learner is not above his teacher is literally what that means uh, the servant is not above his lord uh, we've turned there a time or two lately but i want you to turn back with me to luke 6 in verse 40 uh, Luke records much the same thing but uh, as uh, Matthew does in verse 24 and 25 but Luke puts it all in in one verse uh, Luke 6 in verse number 40 uh, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago that we had a old man old person's day at school and I, I inquired whether or not uh, I could, since I was dressed normally, if I could count myself being dressed up for that day, and I was told that I could, since uh, it was old person's day. But uh, when I was at Legacy, this little feller and his mama had been down here to Elgin, what's that store's name by Foodland? Hearts Cry. Cry. They'd been down there shopping at Hearts Cry, and he had dug out a shirt from the archives. Marty Mosley for superintendent. And that's what he wore on Old Folks Day. And uh, at the bottom of that shirt, it had Luke 6 and verse number 40. And I, I think I've shared all that with you before. But uh, Luke 6 and verse 40 says, The disciple is not above his master. The learner, the pupil, is not above his teacher. But everyone that is perfect, those that have been fully taught, shall be as their teacher. You and I, as children of God, uh, our main teacher should be the Holy Spirit of God, which is God himself. And so when he has fully done his work in our life, 
we're going to be just like him. Now, uh, the book, First John, I believe it is, has it this way. We don't know what, when he appears, we don't know what he's going to look like. We don't know, but we'll know this one thing. We're going to be like him because we shall see him as he is. So, uh, again, back to Matthew 10, 24, says much the same thing as Luke recorded. Uh, wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, if we're just sitting on the couch at home, we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ while sitting on that couch at home. If we're driving down the road, we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ while driving down the road. If we're one of his children on the job, we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ if we're one of his. Wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ, and we don't need to forget that. We have to put him first in our lives. Look at verse 25. It is enough for the disciple, it is enough for the learner to be as his master, to be as his teacher, and the servant as his Lord. And look here, if they called the Lord Jesus Christ names, they called him Satan himself. That's who you get your power from, Jesus. Satan. If they do that to Jesus, who do we to go run and hide when they call us names, when they talk about us? When they run us down. So if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub or Satan himself, how much more shall they call them of his household? Remember the early parts of this chapter, he tells them, uh, you, you are going to face persecution. They did it to Jesus. Who do we think that, do we think we're better than him? No, because the servant's not better than his Lord. The learner is not better than the teacher. Verse 26 says, To fear them not. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. I wish that I had personally known J. Vernon McGee because he speaks in uh, ways. Uh, some of y'all saw pictures of when I was... Uh, Exit, making my exit, it shows Christian how them kids, uh, like just kept on writing stuff on the board, little sayings that I had told them in just one semester. And, uh, but I wish I'd have known J. Vernon McGee because of the sayings that he has. And he says this about verse 26, friend, your life is going to be turned wrong side out someday. And so was mine. God's ultimate judgment will someday vindicate believers and deal with persecutors. Bridget, yesterday uh, was National Daughters Day, and my oldest daughter asked if we was going to be in Florence, if we could bring her some food. And you said, well, how come she couldn't co go get her own food? Well, uh, she coaches volleyball at, Wilson and Wilson is the host of the volleyball county tournament this year and yesterday the junior high and B team the junior varsities county tournament was down there so she couldn't get away so daddy found out why how much what she wanted plus Bridget my car needed washing really bad and I knew for twenty nine ninety nine I could get unlimited car washers for a month and my car was so dirty that I ran it through twice. And then got a napkin out of the glove compartment and scrubbed what the machine didn't get off. I scrubbed it off. And did you know that I also even vacuumed out the inside? <laughs> Had a little bit of help from the lady back there on the back row just a little bit. She even uh, washed up the... Uh, floor mats, the front two floor mats uh, with a little machine they had there. She used to ask me this, 
why do you only wash the inside of the uh, the outside of the car? The inside's where you ride. Why, why don't you clean it up? J. Vernon McGee says we're, one day we're going to be turned wrong side out and we had better make sure that our inside is looking as attractive as we try to make the outside look. You say, well, how, how can I, what can I do? Turn over with me to uh, John chapter 15. And as you're turning to John 15, I want to remind you about what the book of Romans says. I think it's Romans 10 and verse number 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word. And so many times in our life we might ask God, God, increase my faith. And I hope that each time we pray that prayer that he points us to Romans 10, 17. Because his word, hearing his word, reading his word, studying his word, will increase our faith. John 15, verse number 3. How can we clean up the inside? Well, he says to us as he's talking about the, the vine and the uh, God being the father being the husbandman and he takes care of the vine and we need to be a part of the vine in order to produce fruit. He tells us in John 15 verse 3, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You say, well, Brother Marty, I'm going I'm to go through and I'm going to read all them, red, them words in red. Well, That'd be great. But also read them words in black print too. Because all scripture is inspired by God. Don't forget to read all of his word. From the longest verse you can find to the shortest verse you can find. It'll clean us up and make us mold us into who we need to be by knowing what his word says. So uh, if you look back with me to Matthew 10, verse 26, it says, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. There's nothing hid that shall not be known. Verse number 27, and I, I kind of chuckled what J. Vernon McGee wrote for verse number 27, and we'll get to that here in just a minute. Uh, verse 27 says, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Whatever he speaks to us, whatever time of day that it is, may we, as our cup runs over, may we be sharing that as we go from place to place. What you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Toward the end of uh, my granddaddy's journey here on earth, uh, daddy started cutting his yard for him, and we had a, at home, we had a cub cadet riding lawnmower and uh, Daddy was over there cutting grass one day, and the the belt, the drive belt, I believe it was, broke. And so, Granddaddy hit, gave Daddy a five dollar bill to pay for that belt. And Daddy said, "Well, that might it might get me the gas to go back up there, up there and back, but it ain't gonna pay for that belt." So Granddaddy wanted to ride with him. Daddy carried him what used to be. Uh, food land in Loretta, Tennessee, I believe it was. I believe it's uh, Gobbles, or it used to be Gobbles, I believe what it was. And it had that automatic door like Elgin's got. 
And Daddy said the Granddaddy walked up to that door and never had seen one like it before, and it opened up for him, and he just stood there just amazed. I think not only my Granddaddy would be amazed at what goes on this day and time, but J. Vernon McGee would be amazed at what goes on. He, J. Vernon McGee died in 1988. My Granddaddy died in 1996. J. Vernon McGee writes that writes this. I always think of a radio as being the best way of preaching from the housetops. Put an aerial on your rooftop, and you can pick up even the most difficult radio stations. This is the way we preach from the housetops today. I think it is an effective way. I wonder what he would think about the Internet. Growing up, Daddy had a CB radio, and he talked to people all over the place. But even that CB radio, even the radio J. Vernon McGee's talking about, won't reach folks like the Internet will. And it still amazes me that uh, names that pop up on here that's listening, I've never even heard of them before. It's people from the other side of the world it listens and it's amazing so wherever we go whatever we're doing we are his representative and what he says in our ear we're to let anybody everybody know about it when we're given the opportunity we need to be able to give an answer to those that ask Marty, why, why do you believe what you believe? Marty ought to be able to give that answer. Marty ought to be studied up. Let's look at verse 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Turn over with me to Proverbs chapter 1. And there, there's other places in Proverbs we could turn. It says much the same thing, but what comes to my mind right now is Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 7. One fellow said that... Uh, I've learned that when you fear God, you don't have any other man, you don't have any man to fear. Proverbs 1 and 7 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. As my daddy might say, that's A. That's the first part. The fear of the Lord, having him in his rightful place in our life, which is first place. That's the beginning of knowledge. But so many times I think that I know everything. I think that I've got everything where it belongs. And sometimes I act like a fool and despise wisdom and instruction. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear not them which kill the body. What if these that are beheading Christians in the Middle East, what if we, the United States of America, had a fear of God the way we fear them people? Just a question. What if? What if? What if everyone that says, I'm a Christian, feared God like he needs to be feared? In other words, we've got him in the place that he so richly deserves, and that's Top place, first place. What if? Let 
verse 29 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing or for a penny? Or one, one fourth of a penny, I believe is what my, my Bible's got two notes there. One fourth of a penny or one half of a cent. So I guess it has different meanings there. Any one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. Some of y'all's witness some of the same things I have is that uh, a group of sparrows can pretty well take over a place. Uh, there's some trees across the road from down, down south of us that uh, across the road that uh, birds get in there and they, they just take over. And uh, at night you can hear them right when they when they go on to roost and it, it's just amazing. But God knows all about every one of them birds. And more than that, he knows everything about us. Look at verse number 30. But the very hairs on your head, very hairs of your head, are all numbered. He knows all about the sparrows. He knows all about the birds. He knows all about us. The very hairs on our head are numbered. But verse 31 says, Mouthful, for, for fear ye not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. If you'll turn back with me to Matthew chapter 6. Starting in verse number 28. Matthew 6 verse 28 says, and Why take you thought for, the, for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Can, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So take no thought, saying, What shall we, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. The Gentiles seek these things. But up above that verse, he asked about the fowls of the air. They neither reap, they don't gather in barns. In verse 26, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not better than they? And as he says in Matthew chapter 10, you have more value than many sparrows. He knows all about the sparrows. He knows all about each one of us. Now let's get down to verse 32 and 33. There comes times in our, in our life when we have opportunity to take a stand or to take a seat. There comes a time when we have the opportunity to open our mouth or keep it closed. And I realize, I realize this, that there are times our mouth does need to be closed and our ears need to be open instead. And I also know this, that when I'm talking, I don't hear much else of what anybody else says. But look at verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. There's times to open our mouth. There's times to get up off our seat and do nothing and take a stand. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me, before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. We can deny Christ in a number of ways. One way is through word. 
You remember Peter? You was, one hand, you, you was with him. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't me. You was one of them. No. Mm-mm. No. We saw you with him. No. No. Mm-mm. Marty, are you a Christian? Do you know Jesus? Our word, through our words, we can deny him. Through our actions, we can deny him. Our lack of action thereof. And we can also deny him by our silence. Many ways that we can deny him. And I'm going to remind you about, again what those verses says. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And friends, there's times we need the Lord Jesus Christ to confess us before God. We talked this morning about Satan himself being there accusing us. We don't have to call Alexander What's-His-Face to represent us. We need to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ for him to speak up on our behalf. So if we want him to confess us before the Father, then we'd better be confessing him before men. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And friends, we don't never want to deny him. So when we have the opportunity to speak, don't be silent. When we have this opportunity to act, don't sit down. Take a stand. I'll give you a brother Butler. Hadn't talked about him today, I don't think. We pray to God and, and ask him to do this and that. Sometimes our prayers need feet. Sometimes our prayers need, a, need hands. Sometimes our prayers need a voice. We want God to move. Are we moving? Are we willing? Friends, we need to allow the Holy Spirit of God to, to move through and in us. One last verse, and then we'll we'll close tonight. If you'll, just a reminder, I need reminded. You may not be need reminded. I need reminded. Romans eight, verse fourteen, and we'll read down through verse seventeen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Remember God's Holy Spirit. Part of his job is to glorify Jesus Christ. So may our actions, may our words, may where we go, may what we do bring glory to his blessed name. Verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also 
glorified together. May we be about the Father's business. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, tonight for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. We're thankful for these that's joined us online as well. Lord, you have your will and way in each one of our lives. And Lord, as the opportunity arises for us to speak, give us the words to speak. When it comes the opportunity for us to listen, give us the ears to listen and the wisdom to know which one needs to be done. Have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.